Welcome everybody. In this episode, we're going to continue our API discussion. In the last two episodes, we created a basic Django application and then created an API. The only problem was we didn't have any data. So we're going to start this video off by talking about how to put data in our database, get that data to show up in our API and how to request for that data in our React application. So overall, it's going to be pretty cool. Let's get to it. So this is our API so far. Not too many customers probably ain't making too much money from this list of customers. So let's go ahead and add some customers to this list. And the easiest way to do this is inside of your app, right click new file and say admin.py. So this file, we can describe an admin site that allows us to have CRUD access to the database without too much extra effort. So what on earth am I talking about? Well, if you go to the site and you drop all this stuff after localhost, and you do slash admin, it'll bring up this login page. So let's go into this page and see what's there. But I already have these auto-filled values. That doesn't mean I necessarily have an account though. This was just saved from the previous times I've used Django. So what we need to do is we need to create an account and we do that from the terminal. So let's close out of this and we will say python manage.py create super user go through these prompts so we will create a username enters fine and give it some secure password such as password this password is too common bypass yes obviously you're not going to want to do that in production but I always do that for testing that way I can always remember what my password is now let's start our server back up and go visit our login page again try to log in actually I changed the username so whatever your username is and there we go we can go into our different tables and look at the data so here's our user what we were doing with this admin.py site is configuring this page so that our new table shows up here right now we just have the default stuff that came with django so let's talk about how we can do that we'll say from django.contrib import admin and then from customers our application name dot models import customer now, all we have to do in here is say admin.site.register and pass in our model customer. Save that, going over, doing a refresh, and take a look at that. Here is our app name, and we have one table in there called customers. You can go in here and you can see our data. We can easily add a customer in here. Let's pretend we have a customer intel, processors, and now we have one customer object with that data. Now let's go back to our API. So we'll say slash API slash customers. And take a look. We have one piece of information with an ID one, name, Intel, industry, processors. Looks awfully similar to the structure for our data we defined in React. So we'll be able to create a pretty similar example for the customers page. So let's go ahead and add a couple more customers. So we'll go back to the admin site, save and add another. Go with something like Taco Bell. What industry is Taco Bell in? Would it be restaurant industry? No, it can't be. It's got to be something like the uh, tacos industry. All right, so we'll save. Let's add another. Oh, yeah, clicked the wrong button there. Let's add another one. Under Armour. In the industry. Uh, clothing. Sure. Okay, so now at this point, we should have a few more things in our API, which will make it a little prettier. API customers. Cool. Now let's talk about how we can use this API or consume the API from our React application. The component we have that's most similar to what we're trying to achieve here is going to be the definition component because that actually makes a web request and puts the data in the page. So if you need to use that as an example, you can. So I'm not going to copy the whole thing, but let's just take a look. We're going to have a use effect, which makes the request to a URL. We're going to assign that to some data and then we're going to loop through that data displaying it on the page not too bad so let's start with the web request so we'll you do a use effect with a fetch inside and we're going to put this inside of our customers page and we have it set up so that when somebody visits slash customers it renders that component perfect all right so the first thing is we're going to create a use effect and that's going to need imported so we'll say import you can already tell you'll mix up syntaxes i was going to say from something import but i need to say import use effect from react 
Cool, now we have access to that, so we will say use effect, and this is going to take a function, which we will define it in line here. Console log, I just like to make sure I'm sane and test it out. Fetching, and I will need to start my application actually. Once that's up, we can go to the customers and we will open the console. All right, cool. So our use effect is being executed. And now what we can do is we can make a fetch. So the fetch is going to look like this. Fetch dot then dot then. Inside of the first one is going to be the URL, which is going to be HTTP colon slash slash local host 3000 slash API slash customers. If you just need a sanity check, you can control or command click that. And see, I already screwed up because it's supposed to be 8,000. So that's why it's good to check. There we go, that's what we're looking for. And now the next then is going to have the response as a parameter and ultimately return response.json. Not too bad. So we'll create a function here. Response return, actually we'll just uh, get rid of the curly braces and say response.json. The curly braces are only required if you have multiple statements and the return is implicit if you're not using the curly braces. Last then is going to have data and we're going to assign it to some state. So another function here. This one will probably end up being on multiple lines. So we'll say data. This is going to require state. So we will also say use state and define some state here. Const customers set customers is going to be assigned use state. Perfect. All right, now what we do is we would just say set customers data and I'm also going to console log data. All right, cool. Let's go back to our page and check out the console. All right, so it will see an error here. Access to fetch at this URL from origin localhost 3000 has been blocked by cores policy. By default, our backend is going to deny all requests that come from an origin that is not explicitly allowed. To do this, we're going to install a package to configure cores. So to say that one more time, this is the path that we are making a request from. This is known as our origin. We need to define that as a legit origin in our backend. This is the package we're going to use to do that, Django cores headers. So in our backend code, let's quit our server. We will say pip install Django cores headers. I was experimenting with this earlier, so it says requirements already satisfied. Yours will actually install. And then what we will do is say pip freeze and direct that into requirements.txt. I try to remember to do that whenever I install something. Now there's a few steps we have to do, which is add it to the installed apps and the middleware. I'm going to copy this from the repo, but it's not that long. So if you're just watching, you can type it out, I'm sure. So chorus headers, being sure to add the trailing comma. So we'll add that in here, cores headers, comma. And then the section for the middleware, I'm just going to copy that, should be placed as high as possible. So I will just put that first thing inside of the middleware section, and I'm just going to format this to be consistent with the rest of them. There we go. Lastly, the only other thing we have to do is create a list of allowed origins. So I'll just define that right below the middleware section. Cores allowed origins, and I will make that a list. And in here put HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000. Save, restart the server, run server. Now let's try and make that request from localhost again. We're still getting that similar error. We're not getting any errors on the server side, so I must have missed something. So I think I know the fix for this. It's stupid, but it's just that we need to add a slash at the end of the URL we are making a request to. And I also remembered I need to add the empty dependency array here so that it only does this once on initial load. 
So let's check it out now and take a look. We have access to our customer data right here. That's pretty cool. Now we can display all this data on our page using map. So in the return, I'm going to put parentheses and we will use a fragment. So just an empty lesser than greater than and we will close the fragment. We can still surround if we want a title, for example, we could put an H1 and we'll change the text here. Here are our customers. And then we will say customers.map surrounding this with curly braces. And then this is going to take a function where each customer is assigned to the parameter variable customer. We'll just make a paragraph here. Inside of here, we will want to say something like customer.name. Now, keep in mind of the problem we also had with definition where it tries to do that too quickly. So we used a ternary to see if that had any data in it. So we'll do the same thing here. So we will ask customers, does it exist? If so, then we're gonna do all this stuff. Otherwise, we are going to do nothing. So you could use an empty string or say null. All right, on save now. Customers.map is not a function. If you take a look at our data, it's actually an object with an array inside of it. So we basically need to jump inside of this customer's attribute. Taking a look at our data, we want to access what's inside of here, an array. So to do this, we could do that down here if we wanted, but I think it makes more sense to say data.customers here, and then we can treat it the same down here. Now, if we take a look at our site, boom, baby, there we go. Those are our customers. And that is how you make a get request to a custom backend. Lots of hoops to jump through for this one, but we finally got it working, so thank you for following along. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes because I want to continue building on this and ideally we can get full CRUD capability on this application. The ability to create data, read data, which we already got, update data, and delete data. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.